300 BC, a Greek sea merchant by the name Hegestratos takes out an insurance policy on his ship and his cargo. A process called bottomry. It's a process where you're given a loan by an insurer to assist in your voyage. And upon completing the voyage and selling your cargo, you pay back the loan with some interest on top. But the caveat was, if the ship was sunk, the insurer loses the money. Hitcher straight to us takes advantage of this, and he devises a wicked plot. He took the voyage in an empty ship. He had no corn to sell on the other's end of the voyage, which was his intention at first. But then his intention changed. He wanted to sink the empty ship. He wanted to keep the loan. His plan backfired. His crewmen caught him red-handed in the act of trying to sink the ship. And they chased him off. They just traced us drowned trying to escape the crewmen. And this is possibly the earliest documented example of fraud. The 21st century. It's a new age for technology, progress, medicine. Yet since over centuries ago, only one thing has remained the same throughout. Fraud. The basic ingredients of fraud have remained the same. An exploit. A lie. A vulnerable individual. And a liar capable of unspeakable motivation. At whatever cost necessary. The only thing that has changed over the millennials was that the lie had to be changed and how to implement it. Investment in startup companies that promise to bring revolution has always been a high risk situation. But no lie in the world of medicine comes even close to that of Theranos. Elizabeth Ann Holmes born in 1984 to an entrepreneur father and a government official mother. Holmes grew up in an environment filled with motivation, brilliant thinking and fraud. Holmes was always mindfully intellectual and we started her first business in high school. Selling C++ compliance to Chinese universities, computer software that converts computer language from one to the other. Her parents arranged for her to have Mandarin teaching at home, which eventually led to Holmes attending Mandarin summer camp in Stanford University. And in 2002, Holmes attended Stanford to study chemical engineering. She worked as a student researcher and a lab assistant, but eventually she caught the grandfather of COVID-19, SARS-CoV-1. She got there through mishandling of blood samples at the lab. Her first medical vision came in the form of a patch for drug delivery in 2003. But then, that wasn't enough. Holmes eventually dropped out of Stanford at the age of 19. She used her tuition money to fund her first medical company, Theranos. Theranos was a healthcare technology company. It promised to revolutionize blood testing. It only needed a few blood drops to take a sample. And instead of drawing blood out from your vein, it was very similar to a blood glucose test. You prick the finger and then you take the blood. It calls devices that they called as nanotainers, which literally, as the name suggests, is just a small vial that holds a few drops of blood. And that's about it. But with it, Holmes claimed that this device can run even more than 240 blood tests, all the way from cholesterol levels which you get as your GP, your family medical doctor, and even to more complex blood tests, genetics analysis. Theranos really offered a revolution that has never been seen before in medicine for such a long time. It promised to cut costs, save lives, and speed of delivery of care. A revolution that has not been seen, like I said, for decades. At its height in 2013, Theranos was bringing in so much attention, but more importantly, so much more money. 
it peaked at a value of 10 billion US dollars. And all seemed beautifully well. The company was a success, it was growing like never seen before. Until 2015, when medical professors and journalists at the Wall Street Journal questioned the true nature of Theranos and what it was delivering. And what they revealed? Rampant mismanagement and incompetence in the company. But what was more scary and more damning and what was more terrible than all this was that the Wall Street Journal found for most of the blood tests Theranos was using traditional blood tests for bloodletting using the veins exactly what they tried to get rid of using a needle instead of pricking a finger but what was even worse than that Theranos was outsourcing their lab work and even using the technology of other competitors was started out of the company to make their own proprietary labs and proprietary lab work is now using that of people who they are fighting against and this was all in violation of the governing body in the Americas that regulates medical procedures such as nanotainers the FDA in 2015 Theranos only had one drug that the nanotainers can even be approved to be used by the FDA from 240 drugs and that forced the FDA to start an investigation into Theranos and in 2016 after forming two reports they concluded that Theranos was in effect scamming people poor record keeping mishandling of complaints not performing audits are only some of the issues the FDA found that Theranos was using devices that had not even been used in real life situations or even simulated situations they have no validation for their effect Theranos devices were not designed to be fit for purpose Theranos was in effect a risk to public health and safety this all effectively started the cascade of a downfall for Theranos in 2016 as they announced that they were going to leave the field of clinical labs for good but as the saying goes what comes up must come down and with a mountain as high as 10 billion dollars Theranos didn't just fall from grace they were catapulted to the ground since the fiasco Holmes has married a rich hotel here she now resides in a 200 million dollar home with celebrity neighbors and fun fact for the day one of her neighbors is actually an investor in Theranos who lost a huge sum of money his name Larry Elson and just imagine being neighbors to him like imagine the battle of blood between them I mean I'd pay money to see a fight happen between them Holmes and her old lover boy slash business partner Sani Balwani they both face charges of defrauding investors and patients on January 4th 2022 Holmes was charged with four of these charges, found not guilty of four other charges, and a jury failed to reach a verdict on the last three charges. Balwani was crap out of luck. He was charged with 12 of his charges, and now faces up to 20 years in jail. Holmes, however, is still not out of the woods. She will be sentenced on the 26th of September 2022, and again, possibly for 20 years in prison but realistically it'll probably be much shorter but Holmes also faces multiple fines including a $250,000 one and restitution for each count of four charges but until then the biggest medical fraudster walks free and you know it is Hollywood so you know she has been idolizing movies and books and stuff and she does live in a 200 million dollar home right now married to a beautiful rich guy so she may have been fooling us but you know she's still one and we're still here in our yeah normal lives but yeah shows what you can do with a big fat lie called fraud. Mm -hmm.